Hello everyone, I'm meteorologist Charlie Ironmonger. Today is a first alert weather day and I want to take you through exactly what to expect as we wrap up your afternoon and head through your evening and overnight hours. For this afternoon, again, highs getting into the mid 90s. It will feel like we're between around 105 to 110 degrees. A heat advisory has been issued across all of eastern North Carolina, save for the immediate coast that will go until 7 p.m. Again, warning people that this heat is dangerous and to take it seriously. Listen to your body if you're planning on spending extended time outside. Uh, the southerly winds not only helping boost that heat, but also increasing and maintaining our high humidity numbers. Now overnight tonight, we're going to be seeing a strong cold front work its way through the area, or at least a front strong enough to produce some severe thunderstorms. Now, those thunderstorms should be crossing over I-95 between around 8 to 9 p.m. tonight and then clearing the coast by the time we get to midnight. Now the storms themselves will be dying out over eastern North Carolina. That shows uh, you why we're seeing that gradient there from a higher risk for areas off to our west. And then that gradient of severe weather potential slowly fades across eastern North Carolina. Now, really quickly, I do want to point out that the areas between essentially um, southern Pennsylvania, even into Maryland, the D.C. area, stretching all the way down into the northeastern corner of Tennessee, that is the area that has the highest chance of not only severe storms today, but a potential for tornadic activity as well. I think ground zero for the tornado is really going to be through Virginia, uh, West Virginia, <laughs> West Virginia and Virginia. My goodness, I'm getting them all mixed up. But yes, those are the areas that are likely to see a possibility of tornadoes today. Us here in eastern North Carolina will largely dodge that tornado threat, but winds are still a concern, specifically strong, damaging straight line wind gusts and microbursts coming from dying storms. Remember, these storms will be weakening as they cross eastern North Carolina. Uh, areas closer to I-95 again have a higher chance of seeing those severe storms hold together, while areas closer to Highway 12 are going to be ex kind of seeing those storms fade away thanks to their collision with an area of high pressure off of our coastline. Now behind it, another area of high pressure will start to roll in, keeping our skies relatively clear and well, mostly dry for both your Tuesday and Wednesday. But those two days, not a big concern. Let's get back into what we're going to be seeing through the rest of your Monday. By the time we get to around six o'clock, still looking at sunny skies. You'll probably be thinking, all right, well, certainly doesn't look stormy. That is fool's gold. These are these storms are going to be riding along a singular line. So we're not going to have a whole lot of isolated storm activity out ahead of that line, kind of giving us a, a warning. This is all just going to come in all at once, but you'll notice just how thick that line is. It should be fairly quick. You're looking about an hour of rain rolling racing really across the area uh, and do note just how much red and even the pinks you're seeing here along this this run this uh, uh, this current still in your model outlook. I want to put it forward, push it forward. That is by two hours and you'll notice much less organization, not really riding along that singular line like we saw before and then also not seeing as much pink. There is still some reds there, but your storm strength, at least potential storm strength will be coming down as those storms approach the coast. So that is a good news, a blessing for those of you watching closer to really the outer banks uh, and even coastal sections of Hyde, Pamlico, Carteret, even uh, southern Craven counties. But that's not going to again be all's well that ends well. Strong damaging wind gusts will occur around dying thunderstorms. Those dying thunderstorms can produce microbursts, which are essentially big columns of air crashing down to the surface that then fan out, putting out 50, 60, even 70 mile an hour gusts. So that's something we're going to be monitoring very closely in the weather center as we head through the late hours of this evening into the overnight hours. Again, everything should really calm down by the time it gets around midnight to maybe 1 a.m. early Tuesday morning. For WITN, I'm First Alert Meteorologist Charlie Ironmonger.